You're listening to The Hello Well with Danielle Show, a podcast taking women of color on a journey exploring all things wellness and power related. We're all about showing you how to put on your oxygen mask first and creating lasting self-care habits that will free you to travel the world and live the life you truly desire and not one you have to fake loving. I'm your host, Danielle Washington. Now let's buckle up and start this journey. Welcome to the Hello Well with Danielle podcast, your weekly mental vacation from the daily grind for busy women who just need a moment to breathe, pause, and woosa. I'm your host, Danielle Washington. And if you have ever in your entire life felt like self care is just another task on your endless to do list that continuously seems like it's growing, this episode is for you. Today, we're going to be talking about establishing a foundational practice for your self-care and one that is seamlessly blends in with the hustle and grind of your life because we all know that we're busy and sometimes it feels like we can't fit it in. So by making this a foundation, it really will help you in a way that I think will make a change because self-care doesn't need to be time consuming. It just needs to be effective. But as you know, before every episode, I love to do a little bit of breathing. So if you can, just I want you to close your eyes and start connecting to your breath. Maybe it's putting one hand on your belly and with the inhale, feeling it expand. And the exhale, feeling it contract. And seeing if you can expand that inhale. So an inhaling longer. And then exhaling longer. So oftentimes we do what's called shallow breathing. We're only breathing from our chest, which means we're not giving our body enough oxygen. That's why belly breathing is so important. And so one more time, one deep inhale, 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 hold the breath and exhale all the air out. And then you can flutter your eyes open if they were closed. But I encourage you to practice this. A great way to do this is if it doesn't feel comfortable, if you're not sure if you're doing it right, is to lay down flat on the ground put a book on your belly and then inhale, seeing the book rise and exhaling, seeing it fall. And that will help you strengthen that diaphragm breathing, which is one of the best ways to give your body the energy and nourishment that it needs. It's like giving your body a Michelin star kind of food. So back to laying the groundwork for your self-care. When you think of laying the groundwork, you think of a house. And if you were going to build a house, Would you build a house on a shaky ground? I don't think so. Similarly, for our self-care, you know, you need to make sure the foundation is there to sustain us. It needs a strong foundation. And that's our focus for today, establishing a simple foundational practices that will easily fit into your busy lives and will act as a bedrock for our well-being, which we kind of all need. Because self-care isn't a luxury. It's not like, oh, I can, aff- I'm going to live in this little shack over here versus living in this luxury house. No, we all need self-care, no matter what it looks like. And today we're really just focusing on building that foundation, no matter what it looks like, because self-care for me is going to look differently for self-care for you. So imagine not having to carve out huge chunks of time but rather integrating your self-care moments throughout the day. Doesn't that sound amazing? And that's the goal. These practices can evolve with you, adapting to your needs and ever-changing life because we have moments and ups and downs where things are going and we need different types of self-care in our life, but having that foundation can help you with that adapting to what's going on in your life. So let's get really into this. Okay, so where are we going to start? We're going to first start off with self-awareness. And that's where I feel like anything starts off with self-care is self-awareness. Being able to recognize and acknowledge one's needs without a judgment, 
without judgment, without judgment, and without guilt is a huge starting point. By understanding what you truly need, we can then tailor our self-care to be effective and not just another task on our list. And that could be done. You're probably wondering, well, how do I figure out the self-care part? How do I know what I truly want or need for self-care? And I get it. There's different types of self-care. Like there's physical self-care. There's emotional self-care. There's social self-care. There's, there's spiritual self-care. There's mental self-care. There's all different types of self-care. And I wanted you to understand that you may need a different type. So ask yourself, Do I need self-care that is going to work on my physical health, such as exercise, diet, sleep, and so on? Do I need some self-care right now that is focusing on how I'm processing and reflecting on my emotions? Do I need self-care that helps me connect with others? Or do I need self-care that will help me reduce my mental stress? So it's really about figuring out One of those things, and a great way to go about doing that is journaling. Another great way about doing that is meditation and just a mindful meditation and just taking moments just to pause and seeing what comes up. The other thing to consider is creating a routine and ritual. And it's essential in this part to craft routines that address all these different pillars of self-care and understanding that the difference between a routine, which is habitual, and a ritual, which is mindful. And one may feel more that it resonates more with you. Something routine may feel like another task for someone. So if that's the case, create a ritual that feels mindful, that feels intentional. Or if a ritual feels too woo-woo, focus on the routine that how can you create habitual habits that will help with your self-care and your well-being. No matter what way you call it, these transformal activities and processes will help you with your daily habits. And we shouldn't shy away from seeking external help either. And I think that's something as busy women or women that we think we're strong, we've got to do it all. I want to encourage you, get that external help, create that community. And if the community is just one person, that is amazing. If it's 20 people, it's amazing too. If it's 10, it's amazing too. Whatever it is that you need to lean on, do it. Whether it's loved ones or professionals, knowing when it's time to ask for help, knowing when it's time to say, hey, it's been a hard day. Can you just listen to me? It's so essential to your self-care. And of course, there's flexibility. That's a huge part of laying the groundwork to a really strong foundation in your self-care. Because let's, let's keep it real. Life is hella unpredictable. I wish some days it was predictable, but it, it's not. So being able to adapt your self-care routines and rituals when life throws you curveballs because you know it's going to, ensures that we remain stable. We remain grounded in our true identity. We may remain grounded in our needs. And we don't get lost in what someone else needs. We don't get lost in boundaries that are not being met anymore. That flexibility helps us stay really rooted in our self-care practice. And speaking of roots, I just want to talk about why this is important. Like, what is the benefits of even being, having deeply rooted self-care? One is the resilience that it gives you. Like having that foundational self-care will better equip us with ways to handle challenges that will come up. It enhances our relationships because when we're at our best, We can do our best to support the people that we love because when we're not at our best and we're pouring from half empty cups or cups that only have a few drops of water in it or energy in it and we're trying to give 
And we're wondering why people are like, well, this isn't the best. You used to do better. That's because we aren't taking care of ourselves. And our overall being, our well-being, our long-term physical, emotional, and mental health is so, so important. And when you have this foundational groundwork that you've done to build your self-care practices on and your routines on and your rituals on, everything benefits from it. Our physical, our emotional, our mental, our social, all benefits from this deep-rooted self-care practice. And as I said before, self-care isn't a one-size-fits-all. It is deeply personal. So you need to find out what works for you, not for your friend, not for your mama, not for some guru, some one person on social media that says, I know it all, follow me. I'm here to tell you, create your own gumbo. Create your own gumbo. Just like gumbo, some people put chicken in it. I don't understand why. Some people put okra in it. I actually am okay with okra if it's not like too chunky. But we all make, everyone's family makes gumbo a certain way. And that's your self-care. Create your perfect gumbo self-care routine that works for you, that feeds your soul, that nourishes your needs. And that is by finding out what is best for you in your journey at this point, because it may change, because we're all on this journey. So let's embrace creating a really strong foundation so we're not out in these streets looking shaky. And that's the episode for today. I will see you guys next week. Ciao. Thanks for joining us this week on the Hello Well with Danielle show. Make sure to visit our website, hellowellwithdanielle.com, where you can subscribe to our show on iTunes, Spotify, and Amazon Music, and never miss an episode. Also, you can follow us on social media at Hello well with Danielle on Facebook and Instagram, and Hello well Danny on Twitter. And if you like Hello 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 Love the show and got some good nuggets out of it, know that I'm not too proud to ask for you to please leave a rating or review on iTunes so that we can continue to expand our reach and help other women of color. Again, thanks so much for listening and I hope to see you next week. Ciao.